had no gray hair uh, when I was in your shoes seven years ago. Uh, and so uh, if you don't want to gray like me, you need to start dying it soon because uh, it's, it's too late. Uh, so young and yet so cynical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we'll be broadcasting from Washington when those two fellows are back together later this week. And because of that, we thought we'd move at issue up a couple of nights. Chantel's in Montreal tonight, and Huffington Post Ottawa Bureau Chief Althea Raj joins Andrew here in Toronto. The society pages, at least, are all excited about the big state dinner in Washington being held for Justin Trudeau by Barack Obama. Aside from that, do these things really matter, Andrew? The state dinner itself is theater, but the relationship between leaders certainly matters. I know people like to say, oh, it's all about the Congress, it's all about committees within Congress, but presidents also matter. We saw that with Mulroney and Reagan, for example. And state dinners, like other forms of theater, these are the types of rituals that human beings use to establish relations with each other. It will have its benefits in that regard, but of course the real meat will be in the meetings between them, the private meetings between them. Yeah, I think there have been eight state dinners for Canadian prime ministers in the past. Uh, Justin Trudeau's father, Pierre Trudeau, had a couple. This was what happened after one of them between uh, uh, Pierre Trudeau and Richard Nixon. Watch this. As far as the prime minister is concerned, we will not talk only on official visits of this type or like the one I will pay to his country. Uh, we will be in communication by telephone, uh, of course, as well as through the diplomatic channels, because this is a new era of consultation and we hope cooperation between uh, our countries who share so much together. Well, I'm not sure how long that new era lasted because <laughs> the Watergate tape showed that Nixon thought uh, Trudeau was a pompous egghead and he also used another word which I won't repeat, but it started with an A, it had seven letters, ended in an E. Um, so these relationships do develop over time, but basically, Chantal, what's your, what's your take on them? Uh, well, you just said it, they do develop over time, and timing is important uh, in developing productive friendships. In this case, the state dinner comes very late in, in the Obama presidency. He's going to be gone next fall, so... Uh, no matter how well they get along, and I'm not saying they can't accomplish anything between now and fall, this will have to be done all over again. Uh, and some chemistry will have to be found all over again, if it is to be found, after the next American election, uh, 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 once a new presidency starts. The other point I think I'd make is we know uh, from news reports and from everything we heard that the, the relationship between the U.S. Embassy, the Obama ambassador, and Stephen Harper was more than cold. And it looks to me like this having this state dinner for Justin Trudeau, there's a bit of payback in that to the conservatives. Althea? Maybe. Um, it's pretty clear that Bruce Heyman, the U.S. ambassador, was completely shut out of diplomatic circles and even he couldn't really do his job because ministers wouldn't meet with him. This is with the Harper government. With the Harper government. And now it's like the red carpet and everybody's just so happy that Justin Trudeau is prime minister and we're all simpatico and let's all hold hands and sing kumbaya. But um, Chantal does raise a good point about, uh, you know, this is a lame duck president. He only has a few months left in his tenure, but he also has a legacy he wants to build. And just Justin Trudeau can help him do that. And I think part of Thursday's meeting is, yes, of course, it's relationship building. You're much more likely to help your friend out if you if he's actually your friend and you like him than someone you despise and who comes to your country and tells you what a terrible president you are and how the only thing he wants is Keystone. Um, but uh, especially, I, if, especially if that legacy is also helping you, if it's part of your agenda absolutely, as well. Absolutely, like climate change, for example, which is mm -hmm. something that Mr. Trudeau said he really cares passionately about. And this is something we all know that Mr. Obama wants to get done. The, it's an unusual type of lame duck presidency, as we've been seeing with Obama, is he's been using the executive power of the president to great effect. Mm -hmm. He can get very little through the Congress, a very hostile Congress, but he's been quite willing, quite aggressively, to use executive power. They have a, he has an asset in Justin Trudeau in that they are not only simpatico personally and ideologically, but they're each very popular in the other's country. Uh, so there's a mutual benefit to each of them in being seen with the other, and, and uh, they're going to exploit that to the maximum. Justin well, Trudeau is certainly being popular in terms of the American media, at least. I mean, he seems to be all over it all the time. Chantel? 
but I also think there's an advantage to Justin Trudeau at this early stage uh, in his tenure to be seen to be taken seriously by the U.S. administration and by the U.S. You've covered those visits uh, that prime ministers make uh, to Washington, and rightly or wrongly, we tend to look to see if they're getting any coverage, and often they're lucky if they get a paragraph somewhere. So, so this reflects on, on uh, Justin Trudeau building this idea that he's a serious prime minister, and the proof is, look, they're looking at me uh, in the U.S., and they take me seriously. And particularly in the issue of the ISIS mission, where a big part of that fight has been, have we been onside or offside with our allies? In it? Are the Americans happy with us or are they mad at us? Which probably we pay too much attention to, but it's an issue. And he'll be able to come out of this saying, look, we're on great relations with the president. Uh, if they do have any concerns about the ISIS mission, they're, they're certainly not making it an obstacle to good relations. All right, Althea, I want, to, I want to show a clip of something that happened today at Huffington Post because the prime minister was there doing a town hall uh, online. And um, the questions kept coming up about, what do you think of Donald Trump? And he was ducking them quite a bit. But eventually, he had this to say. Watch this. I think if I were American, I'd be asking questions right now about why is it that so many people are angry at your politics? Why is it that so many people are so disenfranchised with uh, your democracy uh, that they seem to be acting out or lashing out? All right, I found that interesting because after ducking the question, he finally actually went there for a bit. Mm -hmm. And I, I was surprised that he went as far as he did. What did you think? I wasn't surprised. I mean, in the interview with 60 Minutes last night, he talked about, he didn't refer to Donald Trump, but he talked about building walls. And he is very much setting himself up as the anti-Trump. I'm a compare and contrast. I'm essentially a living embodiment of the compare and contrast with Donald Trump. He said he was paying very, very close attention to this race. And he compared Donald Trump to Rob Ford and said that his campaign had also touched about fresh upon people who were frustrated, but he had channeled that into some sort of positivism and that uh, he was concerned and obviously would not be endorsing Trump. Uh, but he might have to be dealing with Trump. Yeah. He might have to, but I don't know. I, I mean, they clearly have put all their eggs in the Hillary Clinton basket. I mean, John Podesta, yeah. the chairman of the Hillary Clinton campaign, is hosting a big reception for him, or well, rather the institute that he founded is hosting a big reception for him Wednesday before the state dinner. I mean, that's a pretty clear sign about where your allegiances lie. Yeah, yeah no, I, I don't doubt where the allegiances are. But nevertheless, at some point, you may have to be dealing with it. Yeah, there's a difference yep. between what you think and what you say, and there's a difference between what a prime minister says and what a pundit says. So mm -hmm. everything he says is certainly true about what's going on in American politics. I'm not sure it's the place of a Canadian prime minister to be saying that publicly. It's unfortunately a long tradition of Canadians kind of lecturing Americans on the inadequacies of their political system or, or otherwise. Uh, I do, th I do think he's got to be careful that maybe Hillary Clinton is the favorite to win, but she's not a lead pipe cinch. There's lots of uncertainty. There's lots of uncertainty in the Republican race, and there's still uncertainty in the Democratic race, including Hillary Clinton's legal problems. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be smartest, whatever your private preferences, to be making sure that you're on reasonably good relations no matter who the, prim the president is elected. Which seemed to be what he was doing through most of that interview by yeah. ducking the question. But Chantel? Yeah, but the, well, there is a limit to not answering questions when they turn to specifics of what Donald Trump has been saying about keeping immigrants out and banning Muslims. Uh, how long can you just say, none of my business? But the other point is, I think even uh, a lot of uh, American Republican politicians would concede that uh, showing that Trump is, is an issue from a Canadian perspective. He's not saying that the Republican White House would necessarily be a problem. Uh, and from this side of the border, I can't think that there are very many uh, politicians on the opposition side of the House of Commons who really have a, a path to a way forward if it's a Trump White House. OK, that's a good point. What, um, what's actually going to be on the table here this week? I mean, aside from the the dinner and the uh, and the fancy moments what can actually be accomplished here given the fact that they you know uh, as Chantel's pointed out already they we're in the dying months of the Obama presidency what could be accomplished here Althea? Uh, climate change, something on clean energy, more stuff on the border. I mean, you probably remember the Beyond the Border plan from 2011 that Stephen Harper and Barack Obama signed. Pretty much all that 
hasn't gotten done. Uh, they're years behind schedule on a lot of a lot of projects, including the exit and entry controls. Um, just last week, Canada delayed the implementation of these e uh, electronic transfer visas for people abroad to create that hemisphere of perimeter security that they were had talked about. Anyway, so, so there's a lot of stuff on border that they could. There are announceables there. What is not going to be on the table probably is things like Softwood Lumber Agreement that um, expired in October and doesn't look like uh, there's any hurry to get that done. Uh, the Trans-Pacific <laughs> uh, trans trade deal is supposed to be part of uh, President Obama's legacies. Justin Trudeau is not showing any signs. It wasn't even mentioned in the Trump speech. If it is still something that Obama thinks he can get through uh, Congress, I guess he would want to inquire as to uh, Canada's intentions because at this point the Liberals have not committed to it. Yeah, you know, I didn't want to be dismissive of softwood lumber. I know how important it is in, in the grand scheme of things, especially to uh, especially to certain Western interests. Um, but it, it was eight years in the making, that deal, right? And it seemed to go on and on and on. And it was one of those things that the journalists and politicians just had such a hard time describing and, and trying to make, uh, to connect with, uh, with the public on. And here we are back at it again on Softwood Lumber. Well, yeah. all of these things, uh, Softwood Lumber, Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Border Initiative, uh, um, the, the climate change, even the climate change stuff, a lot of it is either building upon or indeed derived from initiatives that were undertaken under the previous government. So it shows that whatever the raging differences that go on within the country, there are certain things that are of a bipartisan, bipartisan concern and certainly good relations with the Americans and dealing with these kinds of issues are part of it. So you're not going to see a huge divergence in approach there, even though there's much, much better chemistry between the two leaders. What are you going to be watching for? What, you know, issues aside or issues not aside, what are you going to be watching for? Althea in this in this meeting? Uh, for me, it's not so much what they're going to be saying, but how the media treats Justin Trudeau. That, to me, is going to be the most interesting thing, because this is all about introducing him to Americans, uh, making him seem like uh, he resonates and that Canada is important. They're hoping to pivot his popularity into something the country can get done. What that is, we, I guess we don't really know yet, but they want to make sure that Americans understand how important Canada is. And whether it's, you know, just four minutes on 60 Minutes that we hyped and kept talking about for weeks on end, that didn't end up being much, or, you know, will this actually lead to substantive interest in Canada? I think for me it'll be the substance of the climate change stuff. It's not going to include carbon pricing since mm -hmm. that would require the Congress and you can't possibly get it through the Congress. So it's going to be a lot, and I, I favor carbon pricing as the most efficient way of dealing with this, which means if it's not going to be about that, it's going to be about a lot more inefficient ways of going about this. And I'm expecting to find some horror stories in the midst of it of, of the type of approaches they take. Chantal? I'm uh, curious to see if uh, Justin Trudeau uses the, the climate change issue to highlight uh, the, the new body language that Canada is on, has on those issues and highlight how that could advance our uh, oil industry's interests. How do you brand it a success? I mean, uh, yeah. It's a success uh, just in, uh, unless someone makes a mistake and trips and, and the Prime Minister makes a bit of a fool of himself. It is a success just by the sheer fact that it's happening. And, and they will, it will, whatever happens, it will be made to appear as being a success. We're not going to see all the things that are happening behind the scenes, all the things that don't get done, yeah. but they will flag whatever agreements, much of which would have already been, of course, arranged and negotiated and all but signed ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So it just remains for the leaders to put their imprimatur on it. It seems like it's full court press in terms of ministers, cabinet ministers, others going, and cabinet secretaries on the American side being available. It's kind of like an old Canada Day on, on Thursday. Yeah, apparently the 20 tickets that Canada had for the state dinner were the hottest thing and they had to tell people that, you know, had been involved with uh, Trudeau's rise that, no, I'm sorry, you did not make the cut. We're only taking five cabinet ministers and you're not one of them. So and they turned the welcoming ceremony on the lawn into a sort of kind of a, you know, if you get a ticket for that, it's because you didn't get one for the uh, for the state dinner. <laughs> You've of got course, ticket, of course, don't you? Uh, no, no <laughs> tickets, no tickets. Here. But won't there be tons of them uh, moving forward? Oh, okay, I didn't say any. <laughs> Who knows? All right, listen, we'll, uh, we'll gather around the table again and talk uh, within the next week or so. Chantal Montreal, thanks, and Andrew and Althea, obviously, here in Toronto.